Hello, everybody, and thank you for downloading episode 35 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Wanted to remind you very quickly that we need you to help us find new listeners on iTunes. How do you do that? It's simple. You leave a review and a rating. Have you already done that? Great job. Have you not done it yet? There's still time. You can do it anytime you want. It's a big help to us, and we always appreciate it. And now, without any further ado, here's episode 35 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Automatic or stick shift? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hello, everybody. Hey, what's up, you guys? Uh, thanks for listening to the show and tuning into this particular episode. Welcome to New York City, where we both are for a change. It's so weird. Uh, it's so weird to be in the same room with Hal. It makes me very <laughs> happy. And we are currently recording this from your cousin's My cousin's place, place. Which is very fancy. Yes. You have a very fancy cousin. Well, what can I say? I come from very fancy people. Yeah. And I balance it out by wearing... Uh, oversized jeans and, and promotional t-shirts. t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> ill-fitting promotional. Everything I wear, like I have a cycle of about like seven or eight t-shirts yeah. right now. That thrilling, thrilling, me. Night Vale thrilling, <laughs> Avengers Night Vale thrilling. <laughs> With a Captain America thrown in for good measure. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very fancy. I had to take my shoes off when I came in the door and everything. That's just respectful in general. Do, well, you, take, do you take your shoes off in your own home? No. No? No. Never? I don't take my shoes off before I go to bed sometimes if it's a late night. <laughs> I just kind of fall down and wherever I land, that's, I once fell asleep and woke up. I'm going to start telling stories probably multiple times on the show. This sure. may be one that I've already told. Go ahead. I woke up one morning after a party in a full tuxedo, including jacket, shoes, and bow tie. What? <laughs> <laughs> Were you wearing that earlier? No, I've changed into it in my sleep. <laughs> you're the, you're the sleepwalking James Bond. Yeah. Made it really easy to hang up the next day and, you know, and put and give back to the, uh, the tuxedo people. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> since we're in fancy town. Yeah. We're in, we're in New York where there are more drivers now than there used to be, but it's a lot of like black cars, Ubers and taxi cabs. Sure. Uh, we're in a so, town where no one drives. Yeah. So let's talk about driving. Yeah. We're, we, this was suggested on, on the Reddit thread on, on r slash maximum fun. Uh, thanks to everybody who contributed there. We, we started a thread. It's already up to like, uh, well over 75 posts, I think. Some of which are suggestions and some of which are arguments that have branched out of suggestions, <laughs> which those are the ones where I'm like, oh, fun. that's a good, that's going to be a good topic. Um, but cake or death. That's K-A-Y-K-O-R-D-E-A-T-H. Ooh, an Eddie Izzard fan. Yeah. Big, big fan of Eddie Izzard. And we're a big fan of you, cake or death. Yes. We, lo- we love you more than Eddie Izzard. Yeah. We're prepared to say it now. Mm-hmm. Has asked, uh, what is better, stick shift or automatic? Stick shift or automatic? Yeah. Um, I drive both. Okay. Have driven in the past both because I have bought some, it's cheaper to buy a, a, a manual transmission car. Yes. So for several years, uh, I know I've talked about this before. I had played my disposable car game. Yes. Where I would buy a car for about $500, never register it get tickets, it would get booted and towed, and I would go buy another $500 car. And it's tough to buy a $500 car with an automatic transmission. (laughs) That's true. It has to be, like, falling apart. I think the only people who buy cars like that are you and criminals. Yeah, most likely. They just don't want to It's a burner car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I buy untraceable burner cars. But you spend a ton of money on your cell phones. They're very high end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) iPhones and everything. But, you know. (laughs) That's what the, they're called, right? Yeah, the international sign of fancy is, have you gotten your new iPhones and everything, people? <laughs> new sponsor of We Got This. Um, I, see, I've never, I've never driven stick because I'm afraid that I'll burn out. This is always what my father would say. Listen, learn how to drive stick shift. I'll teach you because my father drove stick. My mother drove automatic. And he said, I'll treat you to your first clutch. Cause that's the first thing you're you constantly the working clutch. the clutch. You'll burn out the clutch mm-hmm. trying to shift gears, but it, it I never did it. I was just afraid. I think that actually scared me 
out of ever doing it because I, I was afraid I would burn out the clutch forever. What happens with clutch number two if I haven't figured it out by then? If you can't figure it out by the second clutch, then you deserve to not ever drive again. <laughs> If you go through two whole clutches, because those things are built to take a beating. Right. Um, does, do you know how a clutch works? Please explain. Uh, I was, I, it, it works a lot like the gears on a bicycle. Okay. I did not know how this worked. And one of my favorite things to do when I don't know how something works is to go online, uh, to howstuffworks.com. Okay. Um, is Plug. this buzz marketing or plugging? Yeah. Um, and they always have, uh, they always have little animated GIFs that show you how things work. Right. Um, be it a four stroke engine, which I learned how that worked. And I wanted to learn all these things because being a guy who was pretty much broke for a decade and a half, um, <laughs> I needed to learn how to handle stuff myself. Everything except for money. They didn't have a gif of somebody putting cash in the yeah, bank. <laughs> yeah. Here is how getting a job works. <laughs> it's just four gifts of handshakes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's basically. It's a little bit like the gears on a bicycle. Mm-hmm. Um, I went online and I went to howstuffworks.com. Okay. Plug. Uh, <laughs> and they have animated GIFs that show you how assorted things work. I learned how an engine works. I learned how uh, a clutch works from these websites because I wanted to know how to open up the hood of a car and fix small problems okay. whenever I would run into them. And I ran into them a lot. Sure. Because of your series of $500 because cars. Because of my series of $500 cars. And, um, the best way I could describe it is, I mean, it, it's like the gears on a bicycle. Some are small. You've got small gears and you've got large gears mm-hmm. and they, uh, you know, they, one is for, I believe the smaller ones are for starting up and getting going. And the larger ones are for once you're really rolling. So you're using less, uh, energy okay. to move. All right, uh, just to let you know, full disclosure, I'm not really good at shifting gears on a bike either. I'm always either in too high a gear or too low a gear. So I'm, I'm like pedaling way too hard to get uphill or I'm going at, at, as fast as I can on flat land and I'm pedaling like a cartoon where my legs are spinning. <laughs> you look like a flagstone. Like, yeah. I, my legs are like the gears on a fan boat. I'm just well, going but, so fast. But in this case, you know that it's wrong and you know how to fix it. Why don't you just shift mark if i knew how to fix it i'd be bicycling correctly <laughs> but oh. instead i just got a a beach cruiser <laughs> which has zero gears <laughs> beach cruiser is tough in los angeles well yes. i guess not for you because you live in marina del rey yes so i'm near the water you're near the water everything's flat but it's still tough it's still tough for me when you're not in great shape i mean sure. like here in new york i've been walking a lot mm-hmm. and i'm already like like i've been here for maybe two days total i still have Two more full days to go, and I'm like, I'm winded and hot and sweaty. <laughs> I'm done. Just put me in a hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> That's all I want, right? You got to get you a Fitbit because if you wear a Fitbit in New York, yeah, that thing buzzes that you've completed your 10,000 steps by like one in the afternoon. <laughs> I charged my Fitbit. I have one, and then did not bring it with me. But you have an Apple Watch, isn't that thing like a Fitbit and a television and a microwave and all kinds of crap? I mean, I just use it to know when somebody's tweeted something that's interesting to me. <laughs> uh, it do you have a teach me you have a stick Twitter shift. watch? <laughs> I have a Twitter watch. The latest Twitter watch, Buzz Marketing, <laughs> hashtag Twitter watch for all of you Twitter watch fanatics. I'm sure they're giving them away right now on Twitter. So you have, you have always driven an automatic transmission. I was taught to drive on an automatic, even in, even like those sit down simulator arcade racing and driving games. If it was stick shift, I did pretty <laughs> poorly and there was no clutch <laughs> to burn out there. It was just like me spinning out. Into some like huge days of thunder that the Ron Howard racing movie Dr- drive or whatever it was just a huge like flaming wreck because I couldn't figure out how to shift gears. And it like, I know <laughs> that you, you can tell because the RPMs go up really high. Yes. And then you let off of the gas, you hit the clutch, you shift up a gear and then you can go again. And then mm-hmm. you, you're waiting for the RPMs to hit like a certain level. You can hear it go like. But I just – like what if this is the – it feels – here's the thing. It feels like every car with stick shift has its own special – like it has its own personality. Like this one always sticks in third. That's what I love about a manual transmission uh, is that it – you really – and a lot of people who are enthusiasts and people who buy high-end manual transmission cars. Mm -hmm. And this this is why, you know, BMW and the the fancy cars, they offer – 
uh, both, where you can have it automatic or you can switch to do it manually, right. is that it feels like you have more control over the driving. Like you are – the machine is an extension of you yes. and – Every little move that the car is going to make, you are responsible for, which is, which is great. I love, I love that. I love the feeling of the road. I love the romantic idea of man and machine and road right. and the ability to get around like that. Now, that said, it is a heck of a lot easier to text if you don't have to use your right hand to shift <laughs> gears. <laughs> and that's the real message here today. Yeah. This is all about how to text how while you're driving. How to text and drive. Uh, though this is terrible. I'm, I, oh man, I'm a terrible human being because I have gotten or did when I was driving more. I live in New York now and don't drive as much. Um, where I am more, I'm most comfortable texting left handed, even though I am right handed. <laughs> With just my thumb <laughs> because of driving. Oh, that's horrendous. Yeah. It's so much better that you're in a walking city now. Oh, yeah. Any trouble I've ever gotten in has been – any legal trouble I've ever gotten in has been behind the wheel of a car. Really? Yeah. It's always been behind the wheel of a car. I've never – I'm a I'm a model citizen in a walking city. <laughs> but behind the wheel of a car, I have tickets and uh, failures to appear and all kinds of – Oh man, yeah. So when you're I got pulled over for running through a stop sign once and was thrown in the back of a squad car because of so many outstanding warrants for <laughs> dumb car things that I had done. <laughs> you were like on the top ten most wanted drivers list. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm Grand Theft Auto out there. <laughs> so don't listen to me for any driving advice whatsoever. <laughs> so that that's the majority. Were you ever pulled over before you got to LA? Uh, yes. I was pulled over when I was 15 years old. Okay. I was learning how to drive and I was pulled over with my father in the passenger seat of the car for going too slow. Really? Yes. Even though there is no minimum speed limit, I was pulled over because I was doing like 25 and a 45 and the, uh, the cop must have thought something was up. He pulled me over. Walked up to the window, saw that I was clearly a 15 year old with his dad sitting in the passenger seat learning how to drive. Uh, at which point he switched from this guy is probably stoned cop mode to, uh, jovial driving instructor slash dad mode. And he and my father proceeded to sit there and crack jokes about my terribly slow driving for a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I had the exact opposite experience when I was 19 years old. I was on a road trip from Philadelphia to Toronto with three friends of mine. And on the way, we, we stopped in Syracuse for, for lunch. We, I think it was like the summer of my sophomore year or freshman year because uh, my one friend was turning 19 and he wanted to be able to drink beer legally, which you can in Canada. 19, I think is the age. So we're leaving Syracuse. And that's my, why he wanted to go to Toronto. <laughs> that was the whole yeah, – The well, only reason for this trip to Toronto was, you guys, we can go drink. I don't know why I sound like uh, Robin from a Batman cartoon. Because <laughs> that is that is exactly what it's like when you're like, whoa, free, legal drinking. Holy legal drinking, Batman. <laughs> uh, but we – and of course, I wanted to just go see the Hockey Hall of Fame because I don't drink. Yes. And I wanted to play laser tag at the CN Tower. Because you are a story. child. <laughs> yes, because I have a child. I was still, if I went to Toronto, if I went with Jennifer, I, we would be going and playing laser tag at the CN Tower and mini golf. The CN it's Tower fun. is amazing. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's the Canadian Space Needle. <laughs> <laughs> or is, is the Seattle Space no, Needle? No, it's the Canadian Space Needle. There you go. Fine. USA, USA. America. So, so on the way from lunch, I, I take over. It's my first leg driving. And the person before me had driven like 90 miles an hour because we're all invincible at that age. Yeah. And when I'm, you're 19, there's no chance of a car accident. So being competitive, I wanted to drive at least as fast as oh. he did. So we got up to like 80, 85, 90, 95. No. I'm like, I'm going for it. I'm going to break 100. No. I got up to like, I want to say I got up to 110. Good lord, Hal! And I, it was like I felt like I was flying. I was like, you were. I had so much. I felt so free. This isn't an automatic, obviously, not a stick shift. Sure, because then it would have been like, and all of a <laughs> sudden, 
the the universal sound of a stick shift car or a mongrel dog <laughs> either one they're very similar sure That's what they call stick shift you cars, cannot drive dogs. either one of them no you can't don't i've even seen try. you i did a rod <laughs> <laughs> come on guys let's go mush they all sound like a bunch of scooby <laughs> scooby doos that i've gagged somehow anyway scooby's uh, do scooby's do that's a future episode. Oh my god. What is the plural Scooby Doo, everybody? They want to know on Facebook. So I, <laughs> I'm starting to slow down. I, I realize even at that dumb age, okay, I should probably so, slow down a little bit. So I get down to like 95 miles per hour and I see there's a cop behind me, like pretty close. And my immediate thought is, oh, this cop needs to get around me. <laughs> Let me get over from from the far left lane. So I get over a lane. Cop gets over a lane. I'm like, oh, I must need to use this lane. Over another lane. Cop gets over another lane. Then the lights go on. Then I pull over. I freak out. And I'm like, oh, I was speeding. You freaking out at the idea of being in trouble? (laughs) No. I know it's hard to believe, but it's what happened. I'm telling you the truth, guys. Hand to God. (laughs) So I pull over. And then the cop's like, Keep going because we were on like a bridge or something. I just wanted it to be you over just with. pulled over in the middle of a bridge, just wherever we could get. And then, so I so like so that pulled. the tone of your voice was uh, that sentence could have easily ended with "dummy." <laughs> <laughs> and that, it, that, but that was the exact tone. <laughs> he might as well have said uh, "dummy." Pull over further. Mark, it gets worse. We pull over to the shoulder, oh, and I, I roll down the window, and the cop comes over. And says, do you know why I pulled you over? Which is a dumb question. We both know why yeah. I've been pulled over. Also, not my job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> which is why I answered, no. <laughs> <laughs> to which he immediately responds, get out of the car. <laughs> Puts me up against his car, searches me for weapons, oh, starts wow. asking me, uh, do you think that I'm stupid? Are you stupid? Uh, this series of questions, and every time he's using the F word more and more and more, and every time he uses the F friend? word, friend, yeah, he every time he uses the word friend, I use the word sir in my response. So he sits me down on the back of his cruiser while he checks my license and stuff, and realizes pretty quickly, like this guy has no prior record. You're just a doofus. Yeah, he's just a stupid teenager who is driving through central New York way too fast. So, I mean, I got a ticket a, a, like, that was like $110. That was if, it? If I, if I had been going faster than a hundred, I think it would have been, like, the, 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 I looked it up later. Like, if I had been going 97 or faster, it would have been, this guy has to go to jail. It would have been arrestable because then it becomes reckless driving as mm-hmm. opposed to the worst oh, sure. speeding you can do. Yeah, you've been there, but it was <laughs> terrifying for me and I can't, I, I will never go that fast again, but, but in LA, I, I don't drive slow. I've never been pulled over for going too slow. That will never happen to me. Are you an aggressive driver? Um, I can you really, be. this competitive streak of yours is, it's frankly alarming. I can be. It depends on, uh, on how badly I need to be somewhere. Okay. If I'm in a, if I'm in a rush or I'm getting stressed, then I, then I start like, Plotting out like Iron Man, his heads up display shows like, here are the five points you have to hit to get around this building and get through this tunnel. And then I will hit that trajectory. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but still, w- as much as I like to be in control, I don't feel like stif- stick shift puts me in control. Like if that's the, the merging of man and machine, then I'm like a Skeksis trying to walk around. On those wow. giant pole You brought legs. it around to the dark crystal. It doesn't everything yeah. eventually come around to the dark crystal. Um, but now, do you think that you – it's only because you don't know how to do it? Like if you knew how to drive a stick shift, do you think you'd be more comfortable than an automatic because of that control issue? Um, I probably would be. I, I probably would enjoy it. I, I just – there is a there is a certain ease to automatic. Mm-hmm. Like I get the wanting to be in control, but when I drive, I feel like I'm in control of the car. I don't want one more thing that I have to pay attention to, because in L.A. in particular, and in New York, too, if you drive in New York, especially in the city, like man, I, I pray for you all the time because you are going into death race three thousand every single time. Yeah, it's rough. And, and L.A. is bad too. So I, I'm spending so much time watching the drivers around me. And making sure that when I, that I'm st- staying at like a safe distance from them, stuff like that, that I don't want to have to worry about shifting gears 
so I can continue going a certain speed. Well, you you don't really have to worry about that once you learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry so much about shifting uh, because it's automatic in your brain. It, you've done it so much. I mean, I've done it for 10 years. I've driven a uh, stick shift car longer than that. And, uh, and it's just, it becomes second nature at a certain point right. with a new car or a different car. There's always that little learning curve because like you said, all the cars have different personalities to them. Yes. But, um, but I, I, I don't know. I guess I just don't have to think about it as much. I did once, uh, get in, uh, a friend of mine. I picked up my old roommate, Aaron, hopped into my car. We were going to go somewhere. And this was, uh, cause that's what you do in cars is you go somewhere. Yeah. And Aaron, generally, and Aaron had not been in my car before he was visiting town and hops in and I start driving and shifting. And he looks down, sort of silent moment in the car and he looks over and he goes, Hey, um, you know, they make cars that do this for you now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was, all right, smarty pants. <laughs> but that's the division, right? Like, I'm yeah. not a car person. I don't – I always I, – I play through the scenario of what would I do if I won a huge lottery jackpot way more than is healthy for any person to do. What would you do? What's the first thing you would do if you won $100 million? I always take half of it and put it away somewhere where it can generate interest so, oh, I, so I never so lose the money. Responsible. But then – What's the fun thing you're going to do, Hal? Uh, like a month-long trip to Hawaii. Ooh. Charter a private jet, stay in like a home, private maybe get jet, a place man. there, like stay in a really nice place or like a and really ritzy hotel. And then just buy it when you're done. Yeah, and then buy it when I'm done. Say, so I'm done with this. Now it's mine. You know what? I like this hotel. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like turn into Bruce Wayne though. It's not, <laughs> there's no way it's that much. I, because I go down to like, all right, it's a $600 million jackpot. That means if I take the cash option, it's four hundred million, which means after taxes I get two hundred million. So one hundred million goes in the bank. Then I allot this much for a tr like it's cr like I, really in my head. And it's there's something soothing about it. I think because mm -hmm. it's like that's my huge yeah, fantasy. Your thing that you would do if you won the lottery is relax and exactly. not worry about money. I just want to relax, not worry about money. But when it comes to cars, I'm like, gee, I drive a Santa Fe. I really like it. I probably get another Santa Fe so Jennifer and I can each have one. That's it. I don't yeah. want a Lamborghini although the one the one car I would, I would want to get is a DeLorean. And I would then sure, you would, trick, you it would out. trick it out to look just like Back to the Future. Absolutely. Yeah. But I like I'm not a huge car car guy. I don't care for Porsches particularly Ferraris like they're nice enough, but I don't want that that racing experience. I feel like people right. who are into cars at that level, they want to feel like they're constantly in a race. Do you, are, are you a car guy? Uh, I enjoy cars. Uh, the last car that I owned was a 79 MGB, mm -hmm. which is a teeny little toy car, basically. Yeah. It's a British two seater. And, uh, and I drove it. It was my commuter car when I worked at Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So I would drive back and forth in an MG, which is a terrible idea. They're not designed for commuting. <laughs> One time I was driving and it just stopped working in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I, so I kind of coasted and pulled over and luckily I had learned a little bit about cars and, uh, laid down underneath it to see what was wrong and the battery had come unplugged. So I just plugged the battery back in and kept going. Now, is it MG? Is that like a rehab bumper car? Because it feels like any car is meant to be out on the road for a while, unless it's like an F1 drag racer or these something. These are, these are designed as little putt around at, 40 miles an hour through the countryside weekender toy cars. Okay. I see. They're not, they're not built for a 47 mile commute each way every day. <laughs> now I did have another car, my favorite car. Uh, these were my two favorite cars. I had, a, uh, also in 1979, the year okay. I was born. Sure. Uh, there, there were two great MGs from 1979. Okay. Uh, under one roof at a certain point, me and. Might be. <laughs> um, and uh, my other one was a 1979 Scout International, which is a behemoth of a truck. Imagine a uh, – it was like the old Broncos. You know what a Bronco looks like? Yes. With the removable top. Okay. So it looked like a boat. Yeah. It looked like a boat on wheels. The whole thing was this big open-air truck. I feel like I remember that car. You may have, Maybe you I, may have ridden in this I car. I think with I me. might have ridden uh, it. And when it would rain, I would just have to go pull under a gas station uh, awning and wait <laughs> because I didn't even own the top for it. And uh, 
<laughs> and that was my that was my commuter car to Disneyland for a very short amount of time because I got four and a half miles per gallon of gasoline. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I was spending about uh, five hundred bucks a month in gas. <laughs> You realize you could have taken – forget it. Let's not even talk about what that money could what? have bought you in terms of an actual car. Oh, I'm no, more no, interested no, 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 in no, – like I, I think I know what an MG is. Scout and – are you like buying these cars from Prague? Are these some like weird like <laughs> check – it's like a Fjord. It's not quite a Ford because it only has three wheel. Like where are you getting I'm these getting cars? I'm getting into Craigslist. Actually, uh, a lot of them I picked up the um, – I I picked up the uh, the Scout – because I was driving past it in the crummy car that I owned at the time, and I saw this beautiful Scout with a for sale sign on it. Mm-hmm. And I just threw the car in reverse, backed up, wrote down the phone number, called the guy and bought it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then he said, he said, all right, I'll sell it to you. But uh, the only condition is, because this was L.A., I'm in the middle of making this movie right now, and it's the production car. So we have a couple more scenes that we have to film the car in. So do you mind if I borrow it from you for like a weekend, a month from now? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's just, just such a – you're such a go-with-the-flow kind of guy. <laughs> No wonder I have you never like bought a car shift. from a dealership. No wonder. So you, pre- but do you prefer? You've driven stick shift and automatic. Yes. When you've driven, is there one that you've preferred more than the other? Because I like, I, just automatic seems so much easier. And I have, I've had a couple cars. I think almost every car that I've had has had that Tiptronic, where you can shift it over what to is the side. Tiptronic. Tiptronic is basically you have an automatic car, but you can shift it to the right, and then it will simulate. Um, a stick shift without you having to press down and, and sort of release the like clutch. Like a plus sign and a minus sign? Exa- it's a plus sign and a minus sign. Okay. So the, both- so it's a manual transmission for babies. That's exact, but that's what I need. I need the Fisher-Price version <laughs> of – I owned a Fisher-Price car once. That was my <laughs> commuter to Disneyland. <laughs> you just cut holes at the bottom and walked – or the yeah. little tykes. Oh, the little, little tykes. tykes. Cars. I love those. I feel like every every child – Came into contact with a little tykes car. Like if you had a yard, you had a little tykes. Was car. little tykes the battery powered one, or was that pedal powered? That was pe- little tykes was pedal powered. It's always like a red body with a yellow hood. It's mm-hmm. made of that like yes, that I know the one you're talking about. Plastic. Um, then there were the power wheels were the ones. Pow, pow, power, power wheels. Pow, pow, power, power wheels. Power wheels. Exactly. Yeah. This is the this is the language <laughs> of our generation. <laughs> power wheels were awesome. Uh, I was a big wheel kid. Okay. I had a big wheel. Sure, and me that too. That was, man, I didn't, that was my only mode of transportation. Not walking. Yeah. No, I, like, I went from crawling to riding a big wheel. And you can measure your progression as a human being with a big wheel because they have those slots to move the seat back. Mm-hmm. So you start really close up and then you get to the point where you're like, all right, I'm five slots back. The next yeah, slot. My legs are too long now. I'm going to need training wheels. I'm getting a big boy bike. Mm-hmm. That's what's next up. And that big wheel is nothing. You you sit on it. You have like one foot on it and you use it as like a scooter to try to jump stuff. <laughs> right? Isn't that what everybody does? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're you're in a stick shift car until you grow up and get an automatic because who has time for that? That's the way I feel. Like, I, like I'm just I, – I don't want to mess with another pedal. I actually like to put my foot there where the, where the clutch would be. I like to stretch my – my legs out. Yeah, it is. It does make it tougher to stretch out. Um, but you do have a little plate over to the far, far left where you can. There's a little resting spot for your foot when you have a manual transmission. Right. Um, one thing I I will throw out there about the terrible cars that I had. Yes. Um, the great terrible cars. Sure. That I had. I loved the way they looked. I loved the way they felt. I loved driving them because it was a, a machine and it was real and it was tough and it was me and the machine and the road and. Boy, did those things have no amenities on the inside. (laughs) Neither the MG nor the Scout. The Scout didn't even have a roof. Neither of them had heat or air conditioning. I installed a radio uh, in them because – in both of them because they didn't have that either. By which you mean you taped a hand radio to the dashboard? (laughs) Yeah, like a hobo on a bicycle. (laughs) Um. And no, I was I actually learned how to install a radio. I went and I found a cassette player. 
Okay. Uh, brand new. And this was in like 2007. I bought a cassette player for my car. I was really excited about that. How much did that cost? Uh, it was only like 40 bucks. That's not bad. No. And it had, because it had an auxiliary input, so I could plug in my, my phone and listen, or an iPod and listen to that. But right. I also wanted that old school, cause I had a box of cassettes <laughs> and I threw a few cassettes in the car. I remember I had the Divinals, uh, Neil Diamond and Johnny Cash were the three cassettes in my car and one mixtape that I had made when I was a kid. That's a um, really interesting selection. Yeah, it was a weird combo of music <laughs> that I had thrown in there. Um, oh, and the original Weird Al album, the very first one. Sure. Uh, from, from Weird Al back. Yankovic is, I think, the name of the first yes, one. The right? one with the, the hand drawn cover. Uh, yeah. Super ca- uh, cartoony. Yes. Um, and, uh, but these cars were not, on the inside, they were not great. Mm-hmm. Any car I've driven that was an automatic transmission, they were the they were the cars that had more amenities to them. I inherited from my family a beautiful Ford Explorer uh, mm-hmm. that was uh it was great. It was automatic transmission, and that was when I really felt the difference. Yeah, because I, it was right after the Scout. I inherited this uh this Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer edition, leather seats, yeah. beautiful car. Right. Rolled it down a hill three times, uh, and wound up in the hospital six <laughs> months later. <laughs> but, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On my way to Disneyland, um, there, I, uh, yeah, I rolled into a ravine trying to make an exit that I, I tried to make a right hand exit from the left lane. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Like I said, any trouble I've ever gotten into has been, uh, has been in a car. But- oh, one of my failures to appear, by the way, in court. <laughs> Was for the ticket from that accident. Uh, I got a ticket from a cop for uh, an illegal lane change, but not for the lane change from the left all the way to the exit. Right. From the exit into the ravine. <laughs> Was considered an illegal lane change. Well, that's only for high occupancy vehicles. That's why. Sure. Yeah, only, yeah. That's the diamond yeah. lane. Only three or more people can roll into a ravine yeah. at a Ford Explorer. And I had no idea that I got this ticket because I was so out of it. I was being, I was on a stretcher. I was being put in an ambulance. Yeah. And the cop that had shown up at the scene wrote me a ticket <laughs> while I was out and just laid it on my body on the gurney. Oh, good Lord. Right? What a terrible human being. That cop knew who you were. Your name's your name <laughs> must have gotten around. I guarantee you that he went back to the precinct. He's like, guess what? Gagliardi was out there. Yeah. Got finally him. got him. He was on the stretcher. I just and I and what I did was I and then I go over and I slap the ticket on him and then yeah. he goes and high fives all of his buddies. Yeah. I think that ticket must have just fallen out in the ambulance. I had no idea it existed until it was thrown in the back of a squad car for it months later. Oh, it's ridiculous. But here's the thing. like, I, I don't, don't mean to be want... making you nervous in all of this, Hal. No, no, no. Can I'm... I drive your Santa Fe? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I just had a, a steering wheel installed in the back seat. You can sit oh, back there and drive cool. it. cool. It's got a horn and everything. Ooh, wait. Is this the one made out of picnic table plastic? Maybe. You'll have to find out. Get into the backseat of my Santa Fe. Al, I'm a big tyke now. And then out of my dreams. You are a big tyke. You get to drive <laughs> that car like the Flintstones. You get to drive it around town. Oh. But th- this is not to say in the debate of, of stick versus automatic that all stick shift cars are necessarily the cheapest cars. No. Because there is the other end where the really high end – High tech cars do still have stick shift, now, and a lot now, of car people really frown upon a uh, an automatic transmission. Why is that? Because oh, because, it's, because it's not that marriage of man and machine. N- now the more eco friendly cars, like a Tesla sports car, does that have a stick shift? Tesla's a uh, a battery operated car. Yeah, I so it's a, it's electric, but it, but does it have like a stick shift type thing? I'm not sure. To Honestly, I've never driven create or that. Ridden in one. Listen, I happen to have a computer right here, and I'm willing to look it up. While Hal is looking that up, and before we issue our final decision in this matter, let's take a listen to some of the other fantastic podcasts that Maximum Fun has to offer. I listen to Bullseye to be cooler and more cultured than the people who don't know about Bullseye yet. Of course, then I tell them about Bullseye, so it doesn't usually work for very long. Bullseye is your guide to what's good from MaximumFun.org and NPR. Hey, 
every Wednesday, 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 Maximum Fun presents Lady to Lady, a comedy podcast with Tess the Tower Marker, Brawl and Brandy Posey, and Barbara Mayday Gray. Listen as they throw down with comedy heavyweights like Aisha Tyler, Retta, Kate Flannery, and more. These ladies will make you laugh so hard you will literally explode. So go to MaximumFun.org or iTunes and download Lady to Lady before it's too late. Wait, where's the, where's the music? What happened? My throat hurts. I don't know what to do. Should we just get coffee? Okay. And we're back. And I've discovered that uh, they do not have stick shift in the electric cars. They don't need it. There's no need. Like that would really be just sort of a fake. Yeah. So there's a, a there's fake a, they already do a lot of fake stuff. Yeah. You have no more control in an, in a, an electric car by giving it manual transmission than you would, would otherwise. The engine just doesn't work that way. So that is to say there are – those are the high, if those are the cars of the future though, if we're moving to electric, then that means that the manual transmission is going to disappear as well. Sure. It's like cursive. And, um, <laughs> That's true. Or spelling properly. <laughs> U-R. Y-O-U space A-R-E. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Um, so you, you wanted to delve into the history. Well, I, a I wanted bit. to look a little bit in the history and see what kind of old cars, uh, would have an automatic transmission because it was my understanding that most classic cars that you see on the road, and this is an argument in favor of the manual transmission, right. those real great vintage cars, those were, uh, those were, uh, manual transmission cars. Absolutely. Most of them. Uh, but we also looked and we found out that, uh, the, the hydromatic made famous by hydromatic in Grease <laughs> Lightning. <laughs> yes. Um, was actually introduced way back, uh, long, or way earlier than I thought. Uh, yeah, you would have been automatic transmission. Did you cars. think it was like 70s? I assumed or it was 60s? the 70, late 70s or mid 70s that they, yeah, in popularity. Well, at that point, you had, uh, you had like the four, you had the four on the floor, mm-hmm. which is the floor, but then you also had the three on the tree, right? Which is when they shifted, and those weren't stick shift. Those were just, you pulled it down off the steering column. Mm-hmm. So those were, those were popularized, I think around 1950. The first one, uh, the Chevy had the Power Glide that was came out in 1950, and there have been versions before that were automatic or semi-automatic, like in as early back right. as the 30s, or even the the original horseless carriages back in 1904 had a version of automatic, but it still didn't become really popular. It's been it's maybe around 65 years old in terms of being commonplace in in the market, but that's still it's a while. Sure, that's a good that's a good long while. Yeah. Um. So that really was kind of my. Last argument in favor of, uh, in favor of the manual transmission over the automatic transmission. So with the exception of the major gearheads out there, I'm yeah. a minor gearhead, not yes. a major gearhead. I enjoy tinkering around and right. I like that feel of man and machine. But at the end of the day, I think that the win for this has to go to the automatic transmission for ease, for universality of the drivers on the road. Uh, the people that, you know, it, more people are able to drive. Though, if they only made manual transmission cars, there would be less traffic. That's <laughs> Arguably. <true. laughs> but a lot more jerky driving. That's true. There, there would be no um, traffic. People would still act like they were, uh, having to brake very quickly. Cause not everybody would be able to drive it well. Sure. Right and going, away. especially going up hills. Going up hill in a manual transmission car yeah. is terrible. Uh, you're always afraid that you're going to run into the car behind you because there's that moment where you take your foot off the brake before you engage that clutch and give it the gas that you are rolling backwards. And yes. that's generally universal in a manual transmission. Exactly. So um I feel like this one's settled, Hal. What do you think? I agree. Uh, I want to say something to everybody out there who's driving with a manual transmission, who puts on their little driving gloves with the knuckle holes cut out of them. And puts on their Porsche cap and their vinyl jackets to go driving on Sundays. Guess what? When you reach down with your left foot to press on that clutch pedal, it'll be gone. Because I'll have come there in the middle of the night and removed that thing. It's an aberration. We should only have automatic shifting. Automatic transmissions are the transmissions of the people. And the people's will will not be denied any longer. And I want to say something to all the automobile manufacturers out there. Stop making your automatic transmissions cost more. It's dumb and stupid. And and all those Porsche hat-wearing people, you're just filling their pockets with money so they can get more Porsche hats and vinyl jackets and those knuckle-hold gloves. And nobody needs that in their life. They need an easy driving experience that's mindless so that, like Mark, they can text while driving. 
<laughs> How can we one day do an episode where instead of talking to the people who are wrong at the end of the episode mm-hmm. and chastising them, you actually lift up the people that are doing it right? <sighs> it's so much fun to chastise. All right. I'll very quickly right now. Okay. Everybody with an automatic transmission, I want you to go to sleep tonight with a big smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> knowing that you live life better than people who drive a stick shift. And here's why. Because you've taken one of the small tasks off of your list that you don't need on there in the first place. So take that 30 seconds that you probably spend total shifting gears while driving in manual and read a book. Yeah. Do a while painting. you're driving. Write a song while you're driving. Ugh. Text Mark. He'll text you back. I'll text you back. His left hand is free while he's driving. It's amazing. He's just admitted it. <laughs> well, somehow you managed to take that positive, positive version and, uh, still somehow make it a little mean spirited, Hal. You're welcome. <laughs> so that's settled, but we know that there are more debates out there. We have about uh, 8 million to get through on Reddit, but still you can submit them not only through that Reddit, which is r slash maximum fun, but you can also uh, find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash we got this podcast. Or you can reach out to us at we got this tweets on Twitter. Or you can email us at we got this podcast at gmail.com. Uh, thank you to Uri Kelman for our lovely logo. Yes, and thank you to Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thank you to Ken Plume for all the mixing and mastering that will be done in this episode as you hear sirens in the background because we're in New York, and that's what happens. <laughs> Somebody's being arrested or hauled away in a stretcher every 10 seconds. Oh, is that, that is a real a stat? That is a real stat, often at the same time in your case. Yeah. As you yeah. Taken I, away got a, I got a ticket while being taken away in a <laughs> yeah, stretcher. Here's your bench warrant, Mr. Gagliardi. We'll see you in six months when you wake up. <laughs> Anyway, for Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Loveland. For Hal Loveland, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And don't worry, everyone. We We got got this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.